All right, it is a new day and we've been working in the shop and Matt is not here. He's not with us because Matt flew to Florida. So him and Hefe are over there and we'll uh, jump back and forth and see how they're doing on their trip home. Good morning, my name's Matt and I have an addiction and I flew all the way to Florida last night to see if I can get my fix. Hey look, we finally got the right equipment. Let's see if it's big enough. <laughs> what are we doing? And just like any good bad habit, it affects my friends, my family, and my work and it often comes at a high price and yes i'm also well aware that my poor decisions are affecting you today watching this video so here's how it all started a few weeks ago i was cruising facebook marketplace looking for deals that were so good i simply couldn't afford not to get them and i found one all the way here in florida i made an impulse purchase and now it's got me wondering if it was the right decision i am never gonna financially recover from this so the Bombi needs a bed. We need something back here that'll hold people and gear and all the stuff we drive around with. And we want some kind of a roll bar in there, some kind of a roll cage thing. I'm thinking we'll build it out of square tube because this thing is so blocky anyway that round might look a little funny. We're gonna dream something up and show you what we come up with. And we got Caitlin here. She's gonna be helping today. How much welding have you done, Caitlin? Not a lot at all. Okay, so we're gonna start with weld training and then we're gonna make this. So we just cut out a bunch of pieces that we're gonna weld together for fun. So Kaylin can be an expert by the time she starts welding on this bed. So I'm gonna weld one to show her and then we're just gonna let her go to town. When I planned this trip out here, I really didn't consult my family and I didn't consult my work. So, <laughs> all right, we're here and this barn is full of stuff that we're gonna be putting in here. Let me show you what we came for. Let me show you the treasure. Here it is. Corvair parts. I don't have a full list of everything that's here. In fact, the best I can do is just look really quick. So we got deck lids and doors for early models. We got some seats, looks like we got some late model and an early model. Hubcaps, exhaust, heater ducts, turbo parts, emblems, horn rings, oil coolers, windshield wipers, clutches, flywheels, heads, steering wheels, jacks. These totes, I don't know what's in them. There's Corvair parts, that's all I know. I don't know why. I don't know why I bought it, but I do know that it makes me happy. What's in here? That Collectibles. Cool. I have all these. I'm gonna have multiple sets. We've got books. What's this? Oh, got... wow. Ooh. Brand new. This, that's like the 700 trim ringer. That's awesome. Okay, we've got to figure out a plan. What goes in first, how we're securing it, and how to get it all in. Yeah, that was great. Are you sure you haven't done a bunch of welding? Positive. <laughs> that it's pretty good right in there should just be like right where it starts to round off okay nothing on this is flat or square or true or straight or any of those good things so we're just gonna do our best and try to make it look good Short. Not so good. Not very good. What happened? How'd we lose three eighths? All right, we're gonna save this one for later. All right, Hefe, what are you looking for? Uh, Corsa dash. It looks like we got one right down in here. We got a spider dash here, and then there's a Corsa dash in there. I can see it. Well, that makes the trip worth it for Hefe. <laughs> you might make it out of here by noon. That'd be something. We get like eight, nine hours of driving in today. I think it's a total of 28 hours. <laughs> so it stops and stuff, it's gonna be like 34 hours. Yeah. All right. This is getting filled up. Got a couple doors. What are these, late? Early. These are early and they're long. Yeah, these are the two doors. They're convertible. 
What do you think, Jefe? How do you like this humidity? I don't. And it ain't even hot. Like, <laughs> no, this is It's just... beautiful. It's probably 70 degrees outside. <laughs> yeah, it's funny hearing all the locals complain about the weather, how cold it was here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, dude, this is cold for Florida. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got it all out of here. We got it all in the back of the U-Haul. What time is it? 11. 7. Before lunch. Seven. Yep, before lunch. It was like two hours and change. Okay, <laughs> we're now officially ahead of schedule. Not a long shot. We thought we'd be here till like eight. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we got the 20 footer. Yes. <laughs> we didn't need the cubic feet, but we did need the square foot. Oh yeah, that made it easy. All right, we're going to hit the road. Thank you so much. Appreciate you course, working man. with us on this. Absolutely. You know what it's like to work with a distracted guy over thousands and thousands of miles. Look at this thing. Oh yeah, check her out. 1995 Honda Activan. It's four wheel drive, five speed, manual. She came off the boat last month. It's my new daily. <laughs> That's awesome. This looks like a similar platform to the Honda side-by-sides. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, that's pretty cool. Absolutely. <laughs> Oh, dude, I didn't hit just the angle. I just have to chop it again. Oh yeah, now we're looking good. Okay, two good ones in a row. This one's 13 and a half. 13 and a half, that's what we're going with. You hold that right on that one, hold it right on that. Right on that very sharp corner on the one. Do you want to take these over to that grinder and bring them like just polish these little corners off? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, sadly that corner is a little ski wampus. Not our fault. Okay, so I think if we just kind of hold these together and tack them, then we can move over to the bench and like and, then, and weld them good. Yeah. Okay. Does it look straight? Ah. Does it look straight? Yeah. That's for the wrap and stuff, huh? Yeah. You gonna put some seats back there? <laughs> yeah, shit. We are on our way, but before we left, GMO turned us on to another Corvair guy in the area that may have some stuff we want to look at before we leave. I know, I know there's something wrong with me. <laughs> it's all good. It is on the way. We at least have that. So we're gonna see. I heard he's got an Ultra Van. Those are kind of cool. I don't want an Ultra Van, but I wouldn't mind looking at one. All right, Hefe, what did you find that you like? I got new headlight bezels. Mine are all dented up, so they're not even on my car right now, so I'll go put those on. I don't need them, but I found a set I want, I want to take home too. All right, here's one of the things we came to see. This is called an Ultra Van. These were engineered and designed like airplane fuselage, so they're really light, and they put Corvair motors in them initially. Jeez. They are a really unique unique piece of equipment they're just over three thousand pounds all right here's the other hidden gem oh, oh, oh wow oh, i i have never seen a, a gas cap with holes rusted through it yeah this is rusty we just don't deal with this kind of stuff yeah Hmm. These eight door vans were cool. You open these up and there's just this, this breezeway right through them. So if you look at see the racks in the ceiling, uh huh. This used to be a, a dry cleaning delivery van. Um, when we got it, it had Norman's full service dry cleaners, Dolphin Island Parkway painted on the side. 
dry cleaning delivery. All right, well, we got to get on the road, so we're going to go settle up on some headlight bezels. All right, we have a problem. We entered a negotiation with no cash. All we got is cards. We have a generation gap here. I'm kind of caught in the middle of it. I carry cards, and usually I carry cash. Hefe doesn't. Anyway, okay, well, we're going to solve this problem. I'll let you know how we do it. All right, I think we tack it the way it is. We were going to try and straighten it out on the bench, but if we make this look straight, it might look funny with a crooked bed. So we're just going to keep it all crooked equally. <laughs> I'm going to leave the bottoms unwelded because there's going to be a little post in each one of these and it'll rock around on the weld if we do a weld. So we'll just leave them unwelded and then they'll get welded up with the post on the bottom. We're going to tack it all together. Okay, this thing's ready to go back on the Bombi and we're gonna weld in all those little supports. All right, so here's the deal. What we decided to do is we're gonna call Jamie and she's going to mail a check. We got that handled. Everything's good. Jamie is putting, despite how disappointed she sounded in me, she is putting a check in the mail. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. Hey, thank you so much. Right. Thanks for the tour. You got a lot of cool stuff. All right, we are officially heading back to Utah right now. I got Hefe navigating us. Hefe, where are we going? We're gonna stop and get some seafood in Mobile, Alabama. All right, we're headed to Alabama to get some seafood. All right, Hefe found us a place here with four and a half stars. It looks awesome. Look at this place. So they accidentally took our order to another table. So they brought us these rolls as a peace offering. <laughs> I forgot to film my shrimp and the calamari, but it's gone now. There's our last one, it's crawfish. All right, Jalen took care of us here at Felix's in Mobile, Alabama. Mobile. Mobile. I'm, I almost said that. <laughs> Mobile, Alabama. You'll eventually get it right. So I guess to keep the water out of the restaurant when it starts getting, uh, like the weather starts getting nasty, they build things on stilts here, right down by the water. So it's like a theme park. Like if you've been to like Dollywood or something like that, where you got to go on the ride. It's, to get in the restaurant, it's like you're getting ready to go on one of their rides. There she is right there. That is getting us home. So as our navigator, Hefe has given us the goal to make it to Austin, Texas. Well, not necessarily today, but in one swoop. Yeah. Because I've got to be back by Wednesday. He's my navigator, and I'm not even going to question his uh, decisions. I'm just along for the ride. We just crossed the border into Mississippi. So in one day, I've been to two states I've never been to, Alabama. Mississippi, I approve of your state. All right, our first tank of fuel, we got 6.4 miles to gallon. The record does better. Uh, I don't know, but I'm expecting a little bit better because we're not going to be driving around town like we're just all highway now. So I'm looking for an improvement on the next fuel up. All right, we've got this whole thing all tacked into place now. We're gonna leave it this way for Matt's final approval and move on to the dash, which we're gonna work on tomorrow. We will be back like this. It is a new day and we are here working in the shop. It looks like Jake didn't make the snap. Hopefully he reappears in five years. We're gonna go and start working on the dash. And we got some ideas, follow us and we'll show you. In here, we've really got two main things that we need to get in this dash. There's a bunch of little stuff that we'll just fit in. But we've got this really cool gauge cluster from Holly. It's like an LCD screen and it can show all the gauges, I think except for the gas. We'll figure that out later. It's gonna fit in here somewhere like this. We're gonna have like a flat panel running across here. And this is the heater box. 
it's got to fit somewhere underneath and then shoot up on the windshield and keep our windshield clear. I want to make it kind of look like the dash in the banana. So let's go check that out really quick and see what we're trying to do. All right, so I'm thinking something kind of like this for the dash. Like uh, just kind of one hoop on the bottom and a straight bar on the top. Nice, easy, simple, clean look. Yeah. So we've got a plan. We're going to take it back into the shop and get it done. Well, we drove deep into the night and made it to Austin, Texas. And now we're back on the road because that's pretty much all we got is the road. According to Google Maps, we're about 20 hours from home. So most of that's going to be through Texas. We got to figure out where we're stopping tonight. I'm not going to drive till 3 a.m. again. That's a good question. I think we're going to Roswell. We're going to look for aliens. Burritos and Cheetos. So remember, folks, you got to be pretty healthy to eat this bad. So... Lay off. All right, I have never been to Roswell, New Mexico. I've heard about it. I'm pretty excited. I'm gonna see if it's worth all the hype. I've never been there either. And it's a changing of the driver. Hefe, this is you. Yeah, he looks good over there. I think Matt needs some sleep. I'm, I'm gonna take a little one after <laughs> I eat my burrito. Well, this isn't gonna get us home. <laughs> There's something on fire down there. All right, that was a false alarm. Even though it looked like there was a fire down there, I think it's just an asphalt crew just laying down some pavement. That means we're not spending the night on the side of the road. So here we are in downtown Roswell. So for those of you that don't know, back in 1947, an alien spaceship crash landed here. The landing site is still there. And they say that uh, the diameter and the circumference are always changing every time you measure it, but the radius stays constant. They also say the weather never changes when you stand inside the circle of the crash site. It's always 67 degrees with a 40% chance of rain. Of course it happened. Would McDonald's and Dunkin' Donuts get involved if it wasn't true? I don't think so. I think we're headed to Gallup, New Mexico tonight. Effie, you know what they say? Roswell that ends well. It's a terrible joke. Like, that wasn't even funny. <laughs> My hole saw is a tiny bit big, but that should give us a good saddle. So that, ooh, for sure. That'll go together just like that. So we'll do one more of these over here. That's our dash right there. We just need to stick it all together. Get a little bit closer when you do those. Like you have a lot of stick out right now. Try and get about half that distance. So nip that end off. And then you can get in there and just do zap, zap, zap like that all the way around. Okay, let's go stick it in and see how it looks. Well, we made it to Gallup. Check out where I'm staying. It's got like, like a Cadillac, like a 59 Cadillac grill. Look at that. It's pretty cool. Good morning, it's a brand new day and I gotta show you something. For those of you that don't know what you're looking at, that is a Commando 450. That's the Commando 450, I don't sell that one. I believe this is a black market shower head. I don't think you can just buy these as the general public, but check this out. Look at that thing. Hands down, the best shower head I have ever used. Now that that's out of the way, we've got to get back on the road. Luckily, we only have about six and a half hours today. So we've been doing 11, 10, 11 hours a day for the last couple of days. So today's gonna to seem like a snap, but we gotta get breakfast first. All right, they don't have a continental offering, but they do have a restaurant. So kind of excited about that. That is a sketchy looking pond. We gotta clean off a little bit of this tub so we can weld to it. I don't know exactly where they're gonna end up, so I'm just gonna clean up both sides a little bit.
Okay, we're getting gas in Fredonia. Hefe says he's gonna bail on me here. He's got friends in town and he wants to see him. So I'm finishing the last hour of this trip solo. Good luck. Lonely, I am so lonely. In a quarter mile, turn left onto Arizona 389 West Pratt Street. Well, Siri, at least you're still here with me. I was walking out one evening late, the moon was rising high. I am never going to financially recover from this. I think there's plenty of room. Plenty of room. That's going to work, and you can see right here really good. All right, this is awesome. I can't wait to see Matt's reaction. He's got to be happy. This is cool. Well, I've driven across a bunch of states. We just got one more state to hit, and that's Utah. So even though I'm really excited to get this unloaded, it is pretty late. Jamie has dinner for me. I haven't seen my family for several days. I'm excited to catch up with them. So what I'm gonna do is first thing tomorrow morning when the crew's here, we're gonna get this unloaded. And then I'll try to figure out if I'm ever gonna be able to financially recover from this. I think this is true with a lot of addictions. The thing you're addicted to, like it like, like you need it, it makes you feel good. And the, but it also like causes you extreme anxiety and heartache and I'm looking at these pulleys going what am I gonna do with these I'm going to store them till I'm dead and then somebody will buy this for scrap value and melt it down and turn it into EVs that's what's gonna happen hey I've got a stack that looks just like this look at this those are clean yeah those are factory pieces let me show you all the different oil coolers that are available this is the original folded fin it's the most efficient, but it's also the easiest to get plugged. It was replaced with this eight plate. These ones don't cool as well, but they do, uh, they don't plug up. This is the 12 plate version of the eight plate. And it's considered by most to be equal to that. We should test it sometime. I don't know, but they also made a three plate, which I'm sure there's not one in here because nobody saved them. They were garbage. I do have one in there, but I'm just saving it for historical value. Now I have. 25% more oil coolers than I already have stashed. So this is my stack of late model pulleys. I have now more than doubled it. This is my stack of early model pulleys and it's completely ridiculous. But look, now I got two equal stacks of early pulleys because there's something wrong with me. <laughs> we pretty much filled this container. This one's pretty much reached its capacity. This one's not even supposed to have anything in it, but it's almost full, and I'm never gonna financially recover from this. Thanks for watching. Travel costs were $4,100. Food and lodging was $780. The cost to purchase the parts was $6,500. <laughs> That's a, the grand total. I am never gonna financially recover from this. I need you to write a check and send it to a gentleman. For what? Because there's something wrong with me. <laughs>